All right, in this video, we're going to look at the second blinking eye tutorial. Uh, the first one I did just a little while ago was on this one here. These two eyes are going to be blinking differently now because of what I did in the tutorial. But now we're going to focus on this one. This is a different technique. It involves us. Uh, this technique here will work well when you have um, shapes that are symmetrical and that you can use a shape in KOWP to create a clip. Um, that's what we're going to be doing here. And then we're going to have these uh, little things that you see scrolling in, these eyelids, if you will. They're really just squares, in the, and they're getting clipped to only show this part of the shape. So another clipping animation tutorial here. Probably it streamlines with some other clipping animations that I did a while back. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're focusing on the eyeball right now. And this uh, metal red, that's just this image right here. Uh, I cannot share this on KOWP Toots because of the image that I'm using here. This is for demonstra demonstration purposes. So, um, but hopefully this will guide you in the right direction to apply clip to your picture. So that's just this entire image with the red eyeball. Now the clip lids, that's the first thing I wanna talk about. The clip lids, since I'm trying to clip this circle here, um, I have a shape of a circle and I want to position it and move it and resize it so that it fills up this entire circle. And I'm just going to go to FX for this circle that I'm using as my clip right now and I'm going to set this to none. So now we have this green circle and then you see these other things pop into the picture because I have cut the clip off. Well for now I'm just going to move those out of the way so that we don't see them. That way we don't get too distracted. And now we're going to focus on this clip lids, but I've taken the clip off of it now. Now if I zoom into here, you can see where I don't really have it perfectly set up. And this is the fine tuning that you're going to have to do. Um, the circle, it looks like, you know, right around in here. I don't know if you can see that. If I save this, go back to the home screen, maybe you see how this circle is actually a little bit outside of that black area. And this is because that image has a three-dimensional effect to it with all the gradients, the shadows, and whatnot. But um, we actually need to fine-tune that to where we can get this little part of the green here. That's why I had this thing set to a green transparent so we can kind of see the image in the background. Um, and I actually want to cover that up maybe a little bit more or just a little bit here. I want to bring it in. So I'm going to reposition this. This is the fine tuning you're going to have to do. Um, let's, let's check out the position. I have it set to center, but I don't have it set exactly in the center because this image, this circle that I'm trying to clip is not exactly in the center of uh, the, the phone screen, if you will. So um, some things we can do here, probably the first bet is to make the circle a little bit smaller. And let me see if I can get inside of there a little bit. Okay. Tell you what, that right there with the shadow effect, if I save that, let me bump it up to about six. Start. If I save that, go back to the home screen, um, that looks pretty good. Now up here you may say it's a little bit more showing, but is, there's like a shadow effect in there anyway. Um, I think that right there is pretty good. Um, that's may, maybe look a little bit better than what I had a minute ago. We'll find out. So this is what we want to clip. Now let's bring those squares back into the picture. So I'm going to bring the top eyelid square. I'm going to bring these back and I'm putting them beneath the clip lids. And I'm going to take my other one, my bottom eyelid. I'm going to put that beneath the clip lids. It don't matter which one of those you put, but I'm putting them beneath clip lids in my root, but that actually puts them on top of that circle that you see there. Now remember, I haven't applied my clip. I haven't reapplied my clip. So right now we're going to see the entire square. Now I'm going to take the I'm just going to slide that one there. That way I don't get them mixed up. Top eyelid square is going to be this one right here. Let me zoom back out. So that's this one here. And what I'm going to do for right now is I'm going to go to its animation and I'm going to delete that animation. It's all right. We'll apply all that back. So uh, this thing sits inside of an overlap group, the top eyelid square. You don't have to put it in an overlap group. I did it so I could easily hide these as I was switching back and forth between the two eyes that I was showing you. So all that aside, um, the position... I have a square inside of this overlap group. I made it the entire width of the whole screen. Um, I applied some paint. I applied some uh, gradient to it. And I'm not even really worried about the position of that square because, remember, I had this inside of an overlap group. But if you're not putting that square in an overlap group, just to make sure you adjust the position of whatever, whether it be a square in your root, <clears throat> excuse me, or an um, overlap group. In this case, I have an overlap group with that square in it. 
So I have it anchored at the bottom. You don't have to anchor it at the bottom. I mean, you may say, why did I do that since I have it at the top? Uh, that That's something where if you're familiar with anchors and when you adjust it, if I put my anchor at the bottom and I start adjusting the size, it will adjust the size from the bottom of that shape on upward. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, here, just move it to where roughly now hopefully you see that this square is about halfway um, of that green circle and to see that even more I'm gonna take this clip lids and I'm gonna slide it in front of that top eyelid square so really um, this stuff in this circle when I apply the clip we're only going to see whatever part of the square is sitting inside of here and roughly that square is positioned to where it's covering about half of the circle and just by me eyeballing it it actually looks like the bottom part is uh, a little bit more than this top part but it's okay, I'm gonna let it roll just like that. So let me slide that back up. And now for the animation. Well, let's come down here to this square, bottom eyelid square. Again, I had this sitting in an overlap group. It's the same type of square, except I've adjusted its position. Um, you may notice it's the same number. Um, well, that's because <laughs> maybe I got a little bit lazy when I was making this. It's not perfectly in the center of this circle, but it's gonna be close enough to where we can simulate uh, a blinking eye so to speak so I'm gonna take this animation before I delete it I'm going to copy it and now I'm going to delete it that way I don't lose that animation so when I take all that stuff away you can see how I had this square the top eyelids up at the top and then we had this bottom one and they're closed in together okay that's important to remember think of this as like the original position but this isn't necessarily the starting position of my animation okay now notice what I said there this is the original position but it's not the starting position of my animation. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I deleted that animation. I'm gonna pop it right back into here. And now the starting position of my animation is here, right there. And then it closes and it goes to its original position, then it pops back out. Okay, well how, do I, how am I doing that? It's a loop, it's a complex animation, ease is normal, three entries, uh, module center. I'll bump this up to one second for the duration. And then we have a two second delay. So notice, uh, boom, that's one second, and then it delays two seconds, and it does it again. So how am I achieving that? Remember, the original position is what was when it was closed, but yet I'm starting my animation with it open, so to speak, with it down here. Well, that's where these entries come into play. So uh, I got three entries. At the beginning of my animation, I want the Y offset to be 400. Now, we can adjust this. Let me back out of here real quick. This is what's really moving that square here at the start. I can actually move this up a little bit more. And to do that, now I know you may think this should be a negative, but you have to mess around with your positives and negatives to get it to work right in KOWP. If I adjust this instead of 400, if I make this 300 instead, notice the starting position. Let me come and change my ending one as well. I'll explain that in a minute. So if I change these to 300, it's not going to start as low. Look at that. You see where it's starting at now? A while ago, it was down here. So that is going to be just barely on the edge of that circle. That's a good starting position, to be quite honest with you, because I'm not going to start way down here. I'm just going to start just outside of that circle. So this is going to be a little bit of fine tuning, but that right there, I'm happy with it. Now, what is it doing here? At the start of my animation, it's automatically going to be down 300 units from its starting position. Halfway through it, when your Y offset is set to zero, like you see here, that's going to return it to its original position before you applied animations. Remember, that's what I mentioned a minute ago. Think of the original position was when the eyelid was shut. So that's what I want it to do. I want it to start open, which is gonna move it 300 units down. It's gonna move it to its starting position. And then it's gonna move it back to its uh, position here that we started our animation on. Key thing here for this, notice we are starting and ending at the same spot. Now, if you didn't want your eye to shut all the way, I'll come back and show you that as well. We can adjust this number here. But for now, I'm going to let it roll like that. And now notice what it's going to do. It closes and it opens. Two second delay, closes, opens. And when I say close, that's when the Y offset, when it closes there, that's when the Y offset is set to zero because it's going to its original position before you started applying any animations. Now, with all that said, I'm going to take this animation here. I'm going to copy it. 
and now I'm going to paste into the top eyelid square. But I have to, if I paste this in here, you're going to notice it's going to be moving in the same direction and everything. So all we have to do here, if everything is symmetric, centered, and all that stuff, all we should really have to do is come in here and change these positive 300s to negatives. The thing that's going to frustrate you here is probably trying to get your positives and negatives right. So I'm just changing those to negative 300. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you, this is probably not going to open it up all the way. I knew that was going to happen. Okay, so check out what's going on now. It's starting up here, it closes to its original position, then it opens back to that th negative 300. Well, it looks like here, it's not, going to, uh, it's not going to open all the way up outside of that eyeball. And that's exactly right, because I didn't have these squares perfectly centered in this circle. That's okay. We can adjust this by going back to entries. We don't have to move around a whole bunch of stuff. This will be all right. We can change our offset. We can make it move a little bit higher. So instead of me doing negative 300, I know you're thinking it's going up. It should be positive, but that's not the way that it works. If I change this to maybe negative 320 instead, that's going to start it up a little bit higher and change the uh, change both of these, the start and the end. Let's see if it's going to put this. Okay, it's still not there. It's still not quite there. I need to move up a little bit more. I'm just going to bump it on up to about 350. So negative 350. I'm going to do the same thing for this one down here. All right, so when we save that, now we should be outside of that eyeball. Boom. See what I'm saying? So now we're outside of this circle. Good. All right, so we have both of our squares. Uh, again, I hope you do understand that thing I mean by like while offset, uh, the positives and negatives. It's the opposite of what you think. But then again, it depends on how your wallpaper is set up too. But mess around with the numbers. Understand that Y offset being zero is going to be the original position that you started in before you applied animations. That's how I understand it at least. And I had this, I didn't change any of this other stuff. We should be fine with that. Now, all we need to do here is we need to apply that clip lids because I don't want to see all this stuff outside of that circle. So if I come back to clip lids, and be careful when you're clipping here. I'm just going to go ahead and go to mask and I'm going to clip all. So that means it's going to clip every single thing. When I clip lids and I clipped all on that, it's going to clip all this stuff. So all this stuff that I have beneath here is okay. The switch is just for me to switch back and forth. Don't even worry about that in this tutorial. But I'm, I'm clipping both of these, the top eyelid and the bottom one. Now the advanced editor looks jacked up. It does not look right. But if we save this and we go back to the home screen, um, we should have... Uh, somewhat of a nice blinking effect and as you can see it does kind of now up here at the top I'm just being picky you can still see a difference between your black and the shadow up there but this is the fine tuning you're going to have to do nonetheless hopefully you do still see the blinking effect that we have you can adjust your speeds um, you can uh, change your colors to, to make it maybe blend more with this shadow up here, but I'll leave that up to you, those of you who are uh, better with graphic design. But hopefully this does point you in the right direction. This effect here for blinking works well when you have symmetric shapes. I hope that makes sense there. And um, yeah, there you have it. Uh, oh, oh, that's right. I did want to show you one more thing. Um, suppose you didn't want to close the eyeball all the way. Again, this is all about just adjusting those complex animations. So if I go to my entries, and suppose I didn't want the eyeball to close all the way. I'm just going to set this to like negative 50. And what this is going to do, and notice I did use my negatives to match my negative signs here. This is going to uh, not close it all the way. It's going to uh, close it just a little, or stop just a little bit before it gets back to its original position. And you're going to see that right here. You notice that red one kind of bounced back. So if I save this, I only adjusted the top one. I didn't adjust the bottom one. Go back to the home screen. This bottom one's going to go all the way back to the middle. But you can't even really see it because it's going so fast. But this top one does not completely close there because I did not set my y, uh, y offset back to zero. So mess around with those things. Mess around with your timing, your durations, your delays, and all that stuff. And there you have it. That's part two to the blinking eye. And that is it for this video. I hope it helped.